Hi, my name is Emmanuel. I'm Jaden. I'm Nathan. I'm Yuande, and this is our newest addition to the family. Michaela! Michaela. She was born on the 15th of April this year. And we've been at Restore since 2017. And last year, July, we moved to the Netherlands. So we're worshipping from the Netherlands today. Today's reading will be taken from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 to 17. And we'll be reading from the New International Version. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful the unholy and irreligious, but those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, the sexual immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that confirms the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God which it entrusted to me. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer a, and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, immortal, invisible, the only God be honoured and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we're just going to pray for Jody now. Dear Lord, Everlasting Father, we just thank you for this reading and we thank you for Jody, and we pray that as she comes to speak to us today, Lord, that you speak through her, oh Lord, and that everything that you want us to hear and to understand, oh Lord, that you speak through Jody, and that we are able to leave with this message that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Yuandi. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, all the children. Lovely to see the brand new edition um, and really lovely to see you all. Could you do the reading every week? It was just brilliant. We were just saying, isn't this great? And I loved how the boys were smiling um, the whole way through. But thank you so much. So lovely to see your faces and not just a name on the YouTube chat. So great to have you as part of the Restore family. And um, yeah, thank you for that. And thank you for the prayers. So as we've talked about Already, we've, we are starting a brand new series this week uh, called Entrusted. And um, it's based in the letter, the book of 1 Timothy. And so we've got this beautiful uh, graphic that Vicky has worked on. And so a massive thank you to Vicky for that graphic. And thank you to Rob and Richard for making the set look as wonderful as it does, as always. Um, so just thanks to those guys who helped bring kind of teaching to life and add another layer to that. Really appreciate kind of all they give and all they do uh, to help make these series and the, this teaching kind of connect well with us. Um, so big thanks to the team behind the scenes.
scenes. Um, we don't always see them, but know that they are always at work. Um, but we wanted to do a book of the Bible. It was interesting having the family time replayed this morning that we were doing Ephesians when that family time came through. We like to kind of study at least once in the year a book of the Bible to get rooted in the word and to, to really study it and find out more and to go deeper with one another. And we felt we should choose 1 Timothy, um, which when we chose it, felt God leading us to it and then worked out as we were writing the series, it's probably the hardest letter to base a teaching series on. Because as you may have <laughs> seen from the, the reading this morning, um, Paul, Paul, Paul pulls no punches. Is that the right phrase? He doesn't hold back in this letter. And um, so when I was doing the research for this series, I realised not many churches have actually done a teaching series on 1 Timothy because I think they just shy away from it. It's just too hard. It's too tough. There's too many big issues. Um, but you know us at Restore. We'll go for it. We're not afraid. And um, we're not afraid to tackle tough issues. And that you know, I know I mentioned it last week in the conversation with Ian, but it's about the brave leadership. It's about being brave to have the tough conversations, to have some of those tricky discussions and ask questions and go deeper and we're not afraid to do that we we don't want to be a church who says you have to accept what we say um, that's not our heart at all and we want to grow together in faith we want to grow together as we learn we want to have those questions because questions kind of help you confirm what you believe and and develop and grow your faith and so we welcome that and so let's dive into 1 Timothy let's rip it open for all it's worth and let's see uh, the gold that's in there and the keys to godly living that are in there and so 1 Timothy is this letter that Paul writes to Timothy. It's like kind of a father, a mentor kind of situation. And he, he writes this letter to Timothy to tackle some of the tough issues and the tough situations that are happening in the church at that time. Um, and he's writing to Timothy, he's in Ephesus, and it's, that was really strategic. It's where kind of the, the center, kind of the planting of the churches that Paul planted, and they were centered on truth, on godly living and godly behavior. And yet something had gone horribly wrong and it, they were not um, living as they should. And so Paul is addressing that. And Paul essentially is saying throughout this letter that a ch what a church believes will shape how it lives. What a church believes, what a people believes will shape how it lives. And that kind of covers the whole of the letter. What we believe will shape how we live. And so in 1 Timothy, he gives us these keys to godly living, to, to living well, how to live out this calling that we've been entrusted with. And often when I, what the, the series, the churches that have been brave enough to take on 1 Timothy, often they call the series something like keeping on track or uh, godly living or godly behavior or something about kind of, you know, uh, tracking well and that sort of thing. And just got a sense as we, as we were kind of naming the series that actually, for me, those phrases just seem like hard going in some ways and kind of you've got to be on track, you've got to get it right. And it's all about behavior for behavior's sake. And that isn't the heart of what we want to open up through 1 Timothy over these coming weeks. It's about living out the message that we've been entrusted with, mm -hmm. the keys of the gospel, the keys to godly living. It's not about getting it right or wrong. It's about living out um, all that we are, have been entrusted with, with the good news of Jesus. And so Paul speaks into a lot of these tough issues that are going on um, in Ephesus. He talks about the one that we're going to focus on today, kind of good teaching and bad teaching. I called it the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, Rob was going to cue up some music there um, and I was going to get my Wild West guns out, but uh, we're going to leave that for now. But the good, the bad and the ugly. And then we're going to look at the role of prayer. We're going to look at, at the role of men and women and others are kind of placing value in, in the church. We're going to look at good leadership and good character and the qualities of integrity. We're going to be looking at handling contentious issues. We're going to be looking at caring well for one another within the body. And we're going to be looking at living simply. All those things that are covered uh, in the letter of 1 Timothy. But what's interesting, all, all those things were going on uh, that Paul needed to address in the church at the time. But the biggest issue that was kind of at the heart of all those others was false teaching. That was the key. That was what was going wrong. And so Paul brings that up first and foremost. The first thing he brings up is addressing the false teaching, the false teachers that is going on. And I think it's the key to kind of unlocking the whole of the letter. 
The whole dynamic of the letter um, of 1 Timothy is unlocked by understanding it was based in this false teaching that was going on. And because of that, um, it was creating issues in, this ch in the church at Ephesus. Um, there was distortion of the truth. There was bad doctrine. Um, it was really serious. So serious. As you read it, you see Paul names names. Uh, he names, he's like, that person, out of here. Um, it is very serious. People were being led astray from Jesus. They were being led away from the truth of Jesus, the truth of their salvation, that their freedom, that Jesus brought them in love, um, was, was, and to love one another was being twisted into kind of a set of rules and a set of laws. And, and, and that's how you got to be right with God. And it was missing the truth of the gospel. And Paul says, you know, it's good to have laws. It's good to have those guidelines, but that's not what gets you into heaven. It's the salvation of Jesus Christ. It's the good news. It's the gospel. And so that all through the letter, I'm just going to give you a little kind of heads up of what's coming. But you know, there were several types of people when you look at um, chapters five and six who have given up being Christians. They've given up because of these issues. There were outsiders openly slandering the church when you look in chapter five and six. Uh, some untaught people had assumed the right to teach and as a result were mishandling the scripture, mishandling the Old Testament and just plain wrong and blaspheming Christ. Some of the elders have been accused of mishandling the finances, um, and it seems that unsuitable people have somehow influenced the church's leadership. This sounds like carnage. <laughs> and in all this, the false teachers were consumed, he says, with discussions about genealogies and myths and, and irrelevant controversies. And you're like, wow, that is a church I do not want to be a part of. Is there a problem with my mic? There's a problem with my mic. Hang on, just got to change the battery. smooth. <laughs> Is that working now? Yeah. Great, thank you. Thanks, guys. Um and so this letter is written, that Paul's written to Timothy is to bring order to this utter mayhem that is going on in the church and, and bring the church back in focus, to focus on the message of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, and what we've been entrusted with. We've been entrusted with this message. And we're just going to focus on a few of the verses. There's so much in what Yurandi and Emmanuel and the boys read, but uh, we're just going to focus on a few of the verses. And so if we look at 1 Timothy 3 to 7, and Paul writes this, he says, As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may con command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have departed from these and turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. As someone teaching... <laughs> um, Whenever there's verses like that, it just makes you take a golf a little bit. And go, it's, uh, this is not something to do lightly. And um, I think the Bible's really clear on that uh, time and time again, that those of us who teach, uh, there is, there's a cost to that. And there's a, a cost to our lives to that. As we heard last week with Ian's conversation, uh, just there's a cost to our personal lives, but there's a, there's a cost in terms of the authority that we're given and the responsibility we're given to teach. It's not something to go into lightly. It's not something to do to get your face on camera. It's not something to do to be up on a stage. Um, those are all the wrong things. That is false, um, kind of that's that meaningless stuff. But this, those verses set the context for this letter and the fact that Paul specifically commissions Timothy to command certain men not to teach false doctrines. Command, do, you must not teach false doctrines. Because rather than building up the believers in faith and love, the effect of their false teaching was to incite the 
the controversies and meaningless speculation within the church. That's what was coming out of their teaching. And when I look around the world today, in the wider world, when I look around the church today, I still see that happening. There are teachers out there who incite controversy, who promote meaningless speculation in the church. Especially now we have social media. There are so many posts from teachers on social media, you know, so many blogs, so many podcasts we can listen to. And the question is, are they building up believers in love and faith? Or are they inciting controversy and meaningless speculation of the church? It's big, isn't it? We can listen to stuff all the time. And I think we're, it's time we kind of took responsibility for what we're listening to and who we're listening to. I'm kind of focusing on that for the, the next few minutes, really, that, that actually it's our responsibility to discern well who we're listening to and what voices we're listening to. And, um, you know, in verse five, uh, Paul says that faith, kind of faith in Christ is evidenced by our love for, for one another, for Christians. And there's a defining features of the church, that love for one another. And the essential mistake of the false teachers was to allow their consciences to be corrupted. That was their biggest mistake. They allowed their consciences to be corrupted, which then meant that they were in pursuit of, of love and pursuit, uh, instead, of love, the love, instead of pursuing love, they're pursuing the kind of money and gain, as we'll see later in this letter. Because the, when we talk about false teachers and, and false teaching, it is about the words being spoken. It is about the theology and the doctrine, but it's also about the life of the teacher. And that's the key. Mm -hmm. And that's what 1 Timothy is talking, that's what Paul is saying. Yes, there is bad doctrine out there, but there's bad doctrine and bad teaching because their lives are not lined up with scripture. That's the problem. He says in verse, um, verse 19, he says, you, Timothy, by contrast, must hold on to faith and a good conscience. Faith and a good conscience. That's the mark of a good teacher. That's not the bad or the ugly. Faith and good conscience. The false teachers are untrained and they're throwing all sorts of dangerous teaching out there. And there is a lot of dangerous teaching out there. So we're in an age where we have access to so much teaching. I mean, we've got... Like I said, we've got podcasts, we've got YouTube, we've got blogs, uh, we've got uh, social media, um, we've got more books. It feels like being written than ever. Um, I'm constantly buying books. Um, an endless amount of sermons that we can listen to from anywhere in the world, from anyone, anywhere. My question for us this morning, if we're going to be entrusted to, to live out the message well, is who are we listening to? Who are we listening to? And more importantly, whose opinions shape our faith and our perspective of God? Where do we learn what we learn about God? Where do we learn what we learn about the Trinity, about salvation, about our Saviour, about what it means to live as a Christian? Whose voices are we allowing into our heads? Do we just accept what they say? Because they've got a platform. Everyone's got a platform these days. And how do we grow in, in wisdom and discernment in the truth so we can spot false teaching when we hear it? How do we do that? In an age where everyone's got a platform. There's TikTok, there's Instagram, there's Twitter. Yeah, like I said, there's YouTube. Anyone can say something and sound convincing. Uh, and so many people want to be popular. And so a lot of messages out there are kind of tickling our ears. They're, they're letting us hear what we want to hear because sometimes the truth of scripture and the truth of how we, wanna, how we should be living isn't always easy. Again, Ian said last week, don't believe kind of the American dream version of the gospel that you say yes to Jesus and life is easy. If you're listening to someone telling you that, can I suggest that you question that? 
because that's certainly not my life experience. It's certainly not Ian's life experience. It's certainly not the experience of many, 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 many faithful Christians that I know. We just listen to what we want to hear rather than to the truth. So we need to learn how to discern from truth and from falsehood. And it's not easy, but I want to get a bit practical today. I want to um, share some kind of keys with you on how to do that, because we do want to grow in our faith. It's, it's my responsibility it's to, to grow in my faith. It's your responsibility to grow in your faith. I think we're moving out of kind of this consumerism version of church. I certainly hope so, where we just sit and we receive whatever's being taught and we kind of lap it up and are spoon fed and we walk away. Uh, that's, not, that's not what's in my Bible. That's not what I see in how we should be growing in our faith, working out our salvation with fear and trembling, working it out finding out what does it mean people went to Jesus with questions all the time let's not be afraid to ask questions Jesus had tough conversations all the time he wasn't afraid to discuss the big issues of the day he wasn't afraid to get to the nitty-gritty of the situation let's not be afraid to have those conversations to test and to question and, ha and to discern what is right and what is true and what is not so we just want to look at the kind of, how do we test the fruit of someone's teaching? Because that's key. And I've just put two things down. Is it bringing people to faith? And is it bringing peace and unity? Is it bringing people to faith? And is it bringing peace and unity? Because if, if we don't want to be like the false teachers, inciting controversy and uh, um, misrepresenting and kind of, bringing uh, contentious issues and uh, speculation to the church and mishandling all of that, if we don't want to be those people, if we don't want to be listening to those people, what is the mark of someone who's not then, not doing those things? So is, is that person's teaching bringing people to faith in Jesus? Is it bringing people to repentance? And repentance being turning around, so turning around from the life that they're living and turning to Jesus. Or is it making people turn to them? Mm. There's a few teachers out there that just want to be popular. They want their following higher. And they're not so worried about the following of Jesus. Is the person you're listening to bringing you to repentance? Bringing you to a point where you turn to Jesus more and more? Is it bringing peace and unity? Or is the teaching bringing about division, anger, enmity, within the church and outside the church, and hatred? And that's not to say we don't talk about the tough things. That's not avoiding the contentious issues. We've got a whole week where we're talking about how to handle those contentious, tricky issues and situations. Remember, we're up for the tough conversations. We're not trying to avoid them, but there's a way of having conversations. There's a way of teaching around those issues that does not bring disunity or enmity or hatred and division. There's a way of teaching through those issues, like Jesus did, that brings peace and unity. And that's a challenge. But is, is who we're listening to bringing peace and unity, even in the most difficult discussions, as they talk about race, as they talk about sexuality, as they talk about the poor? Are they bringing about peace and unity? Is that what they're working towards? Or is actually the fruit of what they're talking about bringing about more division and more hatred? Again, on your Facebook feed, just have that question in mind. Mm -hmm. Who are you listening to? Who are you reading? Who are you liking and retweeting and sharing? Because we're all teachers in some ways. We've all got a platform now and people in your life are looking to you. Paul talks about, in the verses we read about, advancing God's work. <clears throat> 
You know, truthful teaching bears fruit. Teeth, truthful teaching and good doctrine advances the kingdom of God. It advances God's work on this earth. It helps his kingdom come. Does the teaching we're listening to have a godly effect on those around us? It's a really good question. What are we listening to? Who are we listening to? Is it advancing, as Paul says, is it advancing God's work here on earth? Is it kingdom? Or like he says in verse 4, are they devoting themselves to the myths and all sorts of other things to promote, promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith? Now, I know we can't know everyone personally, particularly if you follow thousands of people on the social media. We can't, we can't know people personally. And we can read some of their books. That helps. You get a kind of a, an insight sometimes into their lives. But we can't know everyone personally who we listen to. There are some really good teachers that you know, I don't know who they are. And, um, but we can pray to kind of understand the spirit behind their teaching. Mm. And that's another really practical thing I want to ask us to be doing, is to pray to discern the spirit behind the teaching. And discernment's important when we come to listening to people's teachings. So here's, again, a few really practical um, testers for you in discernment when we're listening to someone teaching. So the first one, uh, does it line up with scripture? Is a really good question to ask. Does it sound like Jesus and something he would say and teach? Are they being honest? And what kind of community are they coming from? So the first one kind of, does it line up with scripture? Does it, does it track throughout the Bible? Does it, does it track with the verses that you know and the stories you know in the Bible? Does it line up with that or does it kind of sit outside of that and feel a little bit off and doesn't quite match and you can't quite get it to go and line up with scripture? That's a really, really good one, first of all. The second one I love, does it sound like Jesus? You know? If God is speaking to, you know, all teaching is God breathed. So we're saying, if this, is, if this is the spirit of God, if this is the word of God, does it sound like him? Because <laughs> sometimes I listen to people and go, mm, it's not the Jesus I know. It's not the Jesus I know. So does it sound like something Jesus would say? And again, we can go through the gospels and get to know Jesus, get to know him. Um, it's a bit like when you're on the kind of, you know, in a conversation with someone and someone says something about a friend of yours, and you're like, hmm, that doesn't sound like them. Mm. It just something doesn't sit right. It's like, hmm, I've not really heard them say that before. And we should know Jesus well enough to know that's not kind of something he would say. Um, so does it line up with scripture? Does it sound like Jesus? Um, we can pray to um, discern people's characters when they're speaking. God, is, God offers us the gift of discernment. And we can discern someone's character. I don't know if you've ever listened to someone, if you've been at a big conference or something, and someone's come on and just, just doesn't sit right. There's something, I've had that a couple of times, and later it has come out, something was off in, in their life. And you just think, I can't quite take their word. It just doesn't, something about that, it just doesn't sit right. And often it's kind of around the honesty issue. Are they being honest with who they are? You know, we talk about integrity. And um, again, we're going to be looking. This is really the introduction week. I can't say too much about each thing because we're doing whole weeks on them. But it's all, because this false teaching is the, is the crux of it all. And then all these issues flow out of it. And so the issue of integrity and character. Does this person's public life personal life, private life, line up. You know, when we used to do Growing Young Leaders, we talked about three circles of the, the public life, the private life, and the personal life. And kind of the smaller the gap between them, the more integrity you have. Because in integrity comes from the word integer, which means whole. And that's the wholeness of someone. And we can, uh, we can pray to discern when we're listening to speakers, when we're reading a post. And God, help me to discern, is this... Is this coming from a place of honesty, of integrity? Are they being one thing in public and another thing in private and personal? And we can, we can ask to discern that. And then that question, what kind of community are they coming from? I'd be really wary of listening to a lone wolf. 
really wary. If they are not planted in a local, faithful, prayerful community of believers, just be wary. Got to be placed in a, in a worshipping, trustful, faithful community because in that you have accountability as well. Mm. And so are they based in a community? Where are they coming from? Those are just really practical and prayerful questions we can be asking when we're listening to people so that we are getting the right voices in our heads to help us live well um, the message that's been entrusted to us. And Paul says here, because the goal is love. He says in verse 5, the goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. It's really simple. The goal is love. So what, can we, what else can we do? We can, um, we can pray for discernment. We can ask those questions. Does it line up with scripture and all those sorts of things? Uh, but if we're going to ask that question, there's probably something else we need to do. Uh, for ourselves. So here's what are three things we can do for ourselves uh, that really practical, practical again. We can study for ourselves. We can read the Bible for ourselves um, so that we know if it lines up with scripture or not. We can learn about our faith and we can grow in what we personally believe. And so kind of study for ourselves, taking the time and the energy to read the Bible for ourselves, to study for ourselves. Like I said, let's not be spoon fed. Let's not rely on someone else's faith or someone else's understanding. It's a great place to start. That's inspiring. But there comes a point where if we want to grow as a Christian, if we want to grow as a believer, if we want to live out the, the truth of the good news of Jesus, it needs to be on the inside of us personally. And so we do that by reading the, reading the Bible and learning about our faith, learning about our scripture, learning about our history and growing in our own convictions, growing in our own confidence in the Bible. And there are so many opportunities to learn because if you're asking those questions, then you get some really good people on YouTube. Uh, if you're asking those questions, there are some brilliant podcasts out there uh, that I can recommend and other people can recommend um, because they are, they've passed the discernment question. They've, they're coming from a community that is prayerful and honest and, and worshipful and they're based in that. They're, they're kind of honest and open about their lives and what's going on, the struggles and the joys. You know, they're, they're lining up with scripture. They sound like Jesus when they talk that it's really well matched. And so there are loads of good stuff out there. It's not all doom and gloom I'm just saying be wary now that everyone pretty much in the world can say anything they like but you know there are some great things out there that we can listen to there are some really wrong ideas about God floating around but there's some really great teaching which we can enrich our lives with as well and nourish ourselves with and so I'm going to get your um if you're on a uh, mobile device or something like that get your copy and paste ready because I'm about to give you some links or the hosts are going to put them in for me of links you can go to to start studying ourselves, to start enriching ourselves and, and building ourselves up so that when we ask those questions, we've got something to kind of bring to the table. And so here's one, um, the Bible in a Year app. So the Bible in a Year, there you go. Um, and the host will put the link on um, alongside this uh, for each thing that I say. So the Bible in a Year, a daily Bible reading plan. What's not to love? Um, and even better now, so there's the classic version of it. Uh, there's the youth version of it. And now there's the express version as well. So in 10 minutes, there's the express version. So if you don't have the time um, or, the moment, or it just feels a little bit daunting and you really want to start reading your Bible and get a little bit of commentary from uh, Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, who are from HTB in London, who are really trustworthy, good teachers. Uh, we endorse them. <laughs> we are, I'm only saying things that we endorse this morning. Um, and if they are... Yeah, if you don't have time, you want to start with 10 minutes, then go for the Bible in a Year Express version. Um, so that's one. Uh, the next one, you get a little bit of the verses and then a little devotion. The next one, which a lot of us are doing at the moment, uh, the Lectio 365, uh, which is a meditation on a few verses in the Bible. Um, and then prayer and kind of takes you through this rhythm of pause, rejoice, ask and yield. And so we kind of pause and be still. When we rejoice with a psalm and reflect on scripture, then we ask for God's help and then we yield to his will in our lives. Mm. It's a really great, again, it's about 10, 10 minutes. It's eight to 11 usually. Um, I walk the dog in the morning and pop it in my ears and uh, have, do my Lectio 365 then. And they've brought out an evening version as well now. Uh, so you can go to bed and, and meditate at the end of the day as well. Again, really great uh, resource for growing in your faith, 
for hearing scripture, for and unpacking it a little bit and meditating. That word meditate just means to chew um, in the original, just to chew over, get the goodness out of it, like a cow chews on grass over and over again. And it's kind of chewing on the, the scripture to get the goodness out of it and to get a deeper understanding. So I really encourage you uh, with that one. And then we've got Right Now, <clears throat> right now Media which we became a part of last year. And there's loads on there. And I have not, by any stretch of the imagination, scratched the surface on it. And so cannot endorse every teacher on there. So please do ask those questions when you're watching the teaching on there. Um, but we've, we really like this guy, Michael DeFazio, um, who's part of the Ozark Christian College. And he has a, a series called How to Read the Bible which if you're not sure how to kind of get the most out of the Bible, how to read it, really good series. Maybe you want to do that in a small group. Maybe there's a few of you that, I'd really like to kind of get more out of the Bible, understand it better. This is a really good one, how to read the Bible, Michael DeFazio. Um, another how to read the Bible uh, is Tim Mackey, who is part of the Bible Project. And he, um, again, he does these great kind of how to, he kind of unpacks uh, the Bible and how to read, talks about the content, the origin, the purpose, and just basic skills for reading the Bible well. And again, kind of understanding it well, really good place to start, to start nourishing yourself. And then lastly, uh, another Tim Mackey one, another Bible project one, is Read the Scriptures series. And I really, really love this series. It, it, he does every single uh, book of the Bible. And it's from, some of them are like six minutes, some are 12, depending on the length of the book. And it's beautifully done. You've got a, a kind of snapshot there in the corner in that image. But um, it's kind of a graphic cartoon animation. I don't know the correct words. Sorry, artists and creatives. Um, but, and he kind of, uh, kind of draws our way through um, each book of the Bible, each letter, and bringing out the key points throughout. And it's absolutely stunning. And so if you're wanting to un get an overview of a, of, a, of a letter or of a book in the Bible, uh, then... The, how, the Read the Scripture series is really, really good. Um, in fact, they do a beautiful uh, book of printouts from it. You can, you can print um, posters of each book if you particularly love a book, um, but there's a huge uh, book of them, uh, which Ian and Chris kindly gave me for my 40th birthday last year, uh, which I keep in my lounge. I love opening up and just looking at and, and just reading through. It's really stunning. So um, it's a really good way to get an overview. In fact, that phrase I used at the beginning about uh, the church uh, will live by what it believes, and that, that phrasing, that comes from the Tim Mackey um, overview of 1 Timothy. So thank you, Tim Mackey, for that. Um, so those are some really practical ways for us to grow so we're not fooled by any teaching we hear that we're making sure it's rooted in truth, like Paul said, that we're centred on truth. If we want to be a church that is centred on truth, which we absolutely do, we absolutely want to be centred on the truth and the importance of the truth of the gospel, the truth of Jesus and nothing else. And if we want to be that church, then, then we want to be that church that, that lives by that. Then it's on all of us to grow in our understanding of, of good teaching, that we get rid of the bad and the ugly. <laughs> and we listen to good teaching and we get that in and so that we live well it's not about right and wrong it's really not it's not about behaving well or behaving badly it's about living a godly life living out the message that we've been entrusted with the calling we have as followers of Jesus, as believers, to build others up in love and faith and invite them in to the living water <clears throat> like we've just looked at in the past month or two. That's what we've been entrusted with. When we said yes to Jesus, yes, it was about us coming to Jesus, but then we were given a calling and a purpose to share that message with others, not just with our words and our teachings, but with the way we live our lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm really sure that this is the key for the future of the church. Not just restore, but it has to be that we line up our lives with what we're saying. For too long now, the lives of people in church have not lined up with what we're saying. Mm. We need to live with integrity so we can live out the message. And a church will, what a church believes will shape how it lives. And so we need to believe truth and believe good truth and not false doctrine and live a life that is worthy of the message of Jesus Christ. 
And so that is our intro to 1 Timothy. I hope it's been helpful in kind of looking at some of that stuff and also some really helpful practical pointers. I want to invite the band up um, to lead us in a couple more songs of worship. And just as we kind of lead into worship, I just wonder if there's the opportunity just to stop for a moment. We talked about being still earlier. And focusing on Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I was going to pray over us for this series, really. That we would have revelation of truth over this next six, seven weeks. And if you want to join me in having a greater revelation of truth to to grow in your discernment and your understanding of scripture, why don't you just put your hands out as a kind of, I wanna wanna grow in my faith. I wanna live out this message that I've been entrusted with. So Father God, thank you. Thank you for Paul, or thank you that he got it so wrong for so long. And so we can trust his words. This is about the truth of the freedom we have in you. It's not about laws that he followed for so many years. It's about the freedom you offer, the freedom to live well and live out the godly life that you've entrusted us with. And Father, we know there are so many voices out there but we only want to listen to truth. We want to listen to your voice. So Father, I pray that over these next six, seven weeks, Lord, as we open up this letter, as we open up the truth, as we dive in and and get to grips with some of this tricky stuff, Lord, that those of us who've got our hands open wide now to receive, Lord, that we will receive greater discernment. Lord, that we will receive a greater revelation of your truth. Lord, that we will be open and honest with you. And Lord, that ultimately our lives, the lives of of you and me and everyone here, Lord, that, that our lives would reflect the beauty of your message. That we would live out the good news, not just in words, but in all that we do and all that we are that we might see your kingdom come. Lord, that we might be the church of Jesus Christ. We might represent you well on this earth, that others might come to know you. Lord, they would know us for our love and our faith and our truth, not for our, um, not for our controversies and our mishandling of situations. Lord, they would know us for our love and our faith and our truth. Lord, I cry out that our fruit would be peace and unity that our fruit would be people coming to know you and turning to you. Lord, I pray that we would be humble enough to recognise where we're not walking well. That we would turn to you again and again. We want to be centred on your truth. We want to be centred on you. And we want to hear your voice. That we might be able to speak and live with faith and good conscience. In Jesus' name. Amen.